Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's with a Troop Trials Walther Gewehr 41. This is an extremely rare piece, and it's really cool. Now, in 1941, in the spring of 1941, the German army really wanted to get itself a semi-automatic rifle. The American army had a semi-auto rifle, the Soviet army had a, so had a semi-auto rifle, and here the Wehrmacht had gone and invaded all of Russia with bolt-action Mausers. So a lot of uh, German troops were taking Soviet Tokarevs wherever and whenever they could, they liked them, and there was quite a lot of complaint coming back that the German army didn't have the equivalent itself. So German army puts out a request to manufacturers for a self-loading rifle, and there are two primary guns that uh, they get back in response. One is from Mauser, and one is from Walther. These are both gas trap style systems. They're both really, uh, objectively speaking, they're pretty clunky guns, but the Mauser is really, really clunky, and the Walther is only kind of sort of clunky. Um, in fact, Walther would eventually win this trial by ignoring a bunch of the really dumb requirements from the army, which kind of pissed off Mauser, who was looking at it like, hey, we did exactly what you asked, and those guys cheated and they won. Well, Walther cheated because they recognized that what the army was asking for was stupid. Namely, no moving parts on the outside of the gun, and essentially having it duplicate the handling of a bolt-action rifle in case it, the semi-auto function stopped working. Anyway, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. In the spring of 1941, uh, testing and deliveries were just beginning, and even from the very beginning Mauser was having trouble. The Mauser version, the Mauser proposal for the Gewehr 41, the G41M, was a really complex gun. I have a separate video on it, which I'll post a link to at the end of this one. It required a lot of specialized materials, special steels, uh, and Mauser was having real trouble building them. Like, by oh, April, May of 41, the, the spring of 41, they've, they've managed to submit like 40 of them. Walther's already uh, got 400 rifles of its pattern delivered, and it's got another 800 on the way. Ultimately, Mauser would be limited by the complexity of their design and material requirements. Walther's limitations were simply factory production capacity. And so what would ultimately happen when the gun gets adopted, the Walther gets adopted, is it's contracted out to several different factories aside from just Walther. Anyway, um, deliveries continue. Ultimately, uh, by the spring of 1942, uh, well, summer of 42, the uh, Walther has, has gotten the contract for 5,000 rifles for troop trials. They've delivered them, they've gone through trials, they're well liked by troops. Mauser is still struggling to complete its original troop trials. And so um, December 42, Walther is formally acknowledged as the winner, and the rifle is accepted, and the G41 is officially designated as Walther's rifle. However, in that first 5,000 guns that were uh, that were produced by Walther and, give, and sold to the German government, there were a number of different features. Those are the guns that were used for the initial troop trials, and the most substantial difference on them is that they have a push-button bolt release on the left side of the action. That and several other features would be dropped basically by the second contract. So after the very first 5,000 guns, a lot of these features disappear, the gun begins to be simplified for mass production. So let's take a look at what the Troop Trials guns have that distinguishes them. Let's start by taking a look at some of the markings here. Uh, we have our serial number, 4641, and of course German standard practice was to make guns in batches of 10,000 with letter suffixes as, you know, every time they needed a new 10,000. Well, there are no letter suffixes on this. That AC is the factory code for Walther. This is actually the 4641st Gewehr 41W that was ever made. So that right there puts it in the first 5,000 aside from the features that we'll go over in a moment. We also have the designation Gewehr 41W. Until the trials were formally completed, there were different proposed Gewehr 41s, a W from Walther and an M from Mauser. Once the trial finished, this would be replaced with just G41, once the G41 was the Walther design. We don't need to go totally nuts showing you every internal serial number, but uh, here's the nose cap, the muzzle nut, the front sight block, the trigger guard, the rear receiver cover, the safety flag, the butt plate there. The Germans were big fans of serializing every single little tiny part of the guns. 
Now the Gewehr 41 looks like it has a detachable magazine, but this is actually a fixed 10-round magazine. It can be removed as part of the field stripping process, but for actual reloading, well, when the rifle's empty, the bolt locks open, and you can then reload this with a pair of five-round stripper clips. And then for the actual the weapons that were mass-produced in the field, uh, or for use in the field, you would then just pop the bolt handle back slightly, that drops the, the hold open, and then the bolt can go forward. However, the very first batch, as the gun was originally designed, actually has a bolt hold open, or a bolt release button on the left side. So you can press that, and it'll drop this closed. The idea being you would reload this with two stripper clips, and then your hand's right there, and you just push the button, and it closes. That's convenient, but is it really strictly necessary? And is it something that's easily removed to make the gun faster and cheaper to produce? Yes. Yes, you can just get rid of that. And they did get rid of that. Alright, if we take a quick look on the inside of how this actually works, I'm going to pull the bolt back slightly. This button is going to, right there, when you push it over it cams the back of the floor plate down, which is going to pull in that bolt hold open tab. And so the bolt can go forward. That's all there was to it. Now what happens here is when the bolt's locked back, the spring pressure from the bolt pushing forward is going to hold that tab in place even when the follower is depressed. And that's why uh, what you can do is just pull the bolt back manually, which will reset it. Let's see, I'll push that down. There you go. You can see when that's down and I pull the bolt back, that tab goes in, allows the bolt to go forward. This is just a nice little shortcut. There are a couple other elements to the rifle that are early production features that would change over time. One is this bolt guide rail here. For comparison here, we have our Troop Trials gun, and we have another very early but not Troop Trials first contract example. And so first thing I can point out is this bolt guide rod gets lengthened, and you can see they also add actually a, an undercut lug or rail to it, where this is just a, a flat short rail. So that's one change. The G41 was not originally intended to be a sniper weapon, but Hitler really wanted scopes on stuff, so they went ahead and added scope rails. Now they basically never put an optic into production. There's some prototype optics, but this was never really issued with optics. But they did put rails onto them, and you can see that the profile of the cuts on the rear sight block have changed a bit to accommodate those rails. Note, of course, G41W pre-adoption and G41 post-adoption. And then we have this serrated surface on the receiver cover. That's useful because you have to push this forward to disassemble the gun. The serrations here would remain, but the Troop Trials gun, they also serrated the back of the spring guide. That serration would go away, and the spring guides were just smooth. I hardly need to say this, but it's really unusual for a Troop Trials gun from 1941 Germany to have survived all the way through to the present day. These are guns that would uh, would have been used in the heat of combat at every opportunity. This was by far the, the best and most technologically advanced German rifle in combat service when it was developed. Um, these guns continued to be used in the Eastern Front basically until they broke down and were unserviceable, because it was the best thing out there, and the, the German army in Russia would need all the firepower it could get, and even that wouldn't save it. So extremely cool to get an example like this, numbers matching no less, very, very cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.